Welcome back to the C Morning Show with SNC today. And as mentioned before, we are having a special talk show today. But before that, Paul, you are a father of three. Correct. How do you manage the sugar intakes? <laughs> Very carefully. Uh, I let my <laughs> wife do it <laughs> because, well, because she's with the kids for more of the day than I am. Yeah. So whenever I come home, we do manage. We try to stay conscious about it. Like, for example, if my daughter, my eldest, asks for a treat, something sweet for dessert, I always ask her mother first, what did she have today? Mm. Uh, and she always also sends me, like this morning, she sent me a picture of her lunch so I get an idea of what she's going to consume at school. So when she asks me later, I know what to say because if she's had what I, we think is already kind of hit her daily amount, what we think her daily amount should be, we kind of just say, no, you can have it tomorrow. Yeah, my um, husband and I need to take notes from you both. Right. Yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> it's a little trickier with a three-year-old because he kind of just asks for something on a whim. Yeah. He, he doesn't want sugar or sweet things. He doesn't have much of a sweet tooth compared to his sister. But if he gets something, then he'll be like, I want more, more. But And we, we don't have that two-way communication yet yeah. where we can fully explain to him. Where Managing my daughter understands. the I want more is very difficult. Right. Right? And we also uh, made my daughter watch uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory a few years ago. She, did, she doesn't want to be that kid that eats all that uh, chocolate. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> Augustus Gloop. We yeah. want to avoid Augustus <laughs> exactly. Gloop from falling into exactly. the Chocolate River. Indeed. And I think keeping a closer eye on what our children eat is even more relevant now as Indonesian Pediatric Society has reported a higher surge or prevalence of diabetes among Indonesian children in recent times. Now, according to the report, child diabetes cases have climbed up by 70 times since 2010, with a total of over 1,600 kids diagnosed with the condition. This data comes from 15 cities across the country, including Jakarta, Surabaya, and Palembang. However, most of the cases do come from Jakarta and Surabaya. The report also mentions that 59% of them are girls, surprisingly, while 46% are aged between 10 to 14 years of age. And now that we presented you with some of the, what I consider, alarming, alarming numbers, we will talk more about diabetes in children as joining us in our studio, somebody who is more knowledgeable and well-versed in this matter. He's the pedi pediatrician, Dr. Kurniawan Satria. Denta. Good morning, Dr. Denta. Good morning. With that name, I would have thought you were a dentist. <laughs> Never mind. I bet you hear that all the time. So uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, this kind of disturbing uh, yep. data that has mm -hmm. shown us that, um, first of all, what is causing diabetes in children? Because we do know that onset coming on later in life, it's a more quote-unquote normal thing to expect, but not in children. Not and in children. Why, yeah, so why, uh, why these cases of diabetes in children? Okay, so maybe we talk about first about uh, why. What is diabetes first? Yeah? Yes. So diabetes is a condition or a disease where there are too much sugar in our blood, mm -hmm. and that is because the sugar in our blood cannot be utilized by the cells. Our cells need sugar. Yeah. Our cells need sugar for for to function and for us to move and etc. But the thing is, the sugar cannot be used by the uh, by the cells because we have the key actually. We have the key to put the sugar inside. The cells. cell, which is insulin. insulin. Correct. Mm -hmm. So diabetes happen when there is a lack of insulin, mm -hmm. whether it's the number of the insulin, or whether it's the capability of insulin that lacking. It's like mm -hmm. what we call maybe uh, insulin resistance. Insulin so resistance. the resistance of insulin. So right. insulin is there, but it cannot work properly. So why is that happen? First, maybe because of the number. So we have a um, organ producing insulin, mm -hmm. which is pancreas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Maybe something happened with the pancreas. Uh, maybe because of there is some autoimmune yeah. uh, condition after following the infection. So this is actually quite interesting because uh, people always think that diabetes come from too much sugar consumption. Right. But not only that, after following after infection like maybe rubella, like measles yeah. infection, oh. or even after COVID infection, mm -hmm. there can be a following complication like the disruption of the pancreas, which can cause the, uh, the, the lack of insulin, the right. number of insulin oh, okay. decreased. So right. there's no insulin, there's no the key, there is no the, uh, the key to put the sugar inside the cell. Mm -hmm. And then you have this buildup of yeah. glucose that cannot be converted into energy. Kids do need energy, they run around all the time. Yeah. We always think, hey, uh, at a birthday party, they have some cake, it's okay, they're going to burn yeah. it off when they run <laughs> yeah, around, yeah, but yeah, that's not like necessarily the If they don't have the insulin. Yeah, right. but of course, if too much sugar coming out to the to the uh, consumed by the children or us even the, the adult so the, the insulin become resistant oh. when the insulin become resistant okay. so it become harder for the insulin to put the sugar 
inside. goes inside to the cells. Oh. So that's type right. 2 diabetes. Okay, so, but, but a lot of these things, sorry, but a lot of these things you did mention um, are referring to things that can happen later in life because our bodies have mm. consumed so much or perhaps uh, certain things in our body are breaking down. This is happening in children. That's very alarming to me that children can have any sort of lack of insulin or even insulin resistance. Uh, yeah, but not necessarily happening to the older yeah. age because of what? Because of genetic. So ah. gene actually uh, play quite important roles in the progression of the diabetes. So gene has become like a produced position. Yeah, yeah. So if the children, uh, if the baby born with uh, uh, diabetes, diabetes, uh, diabetes genetic, diabetes gene, so the children will only need some like uh, triggering, triggering, yeah. Yeah. triggering yeah, 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 yeah. event, triggering factor. Wow. It's either the infection or maybe the obesity because mm -hmm. too much sugar. Mm -hmm. And then after that, uh, it, it will start the cascade of diabetes progression until the wow. diabetes happens. Well, um, <clears throat> so you've just mentioned what diabetes is. At what age can children start to be uh, diagnosed? And what are the signs in children that we as parents have to look at? Well, for the what age is as early as below six months old. Now wow. we, we, yeah, we recently. And some are actually born with it. Yeah. yeah, some, some, some baby actually were born with diabetes mm. because of yeah, you know the, of course. the, the genetic, and but the uh, sign and symptom also it's quite big, can be quite tricky for diabetes because plenty of our patients not really uh, having the symptoms mm. until it's too late. So when it's, too late, yeah, when, when it's too late, too late is when the, the uh, blood sugar is too high. Blood yeah. sugar is too high, become, uh, make the blood more acidic. Mm. Mm. So that's uh, make the uh, severe symptoms coming. Only after uh, it's a severe, like a severe symptom is like uh, maybe a coma or seizure or, or wow. something like that. But actually some of them have uh, quite sign and symptoms even before that. Like yeah, it's, it's, it's the same with uh, adult diabetes like you know yeah. thirsty all the time and right. feeling hungry all the time uh, urinating all the time something like that so uh, you mentioned obesity Kai. is that a sign because you know some kids are, are eat, consuming a lot of yeah. sugar and they are becoming obese yes obesity is also one of the signs because uh, because when the when the insulin is quite resistant mm -hmm. the insulin cannot uh, cannot convert the energy Mm -hmm. to become to the cell, the, the body will convert the, the sugar into fat. Right. Mm. So the sugar that, so the sugar yeah, instead fat. of using the sugar yeah. becoming uh, the energy, because of the insulin is resistant, the sugar is converted to the fat. Mm. Mm -hmm. So That's hence, one of the more signs. Yeah, yeah, hence the, 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 the children or even the adult that having diabetes also usually started from becoming overweight or obese. Right. So what I find interesting is you mentioned that because of um, a lot of these cases that you see um, are usually genetically predisposed and with just small triggers, it only takes a small trigger mm. to trigger these um, genetics, to activate these uh, diabetes genetics, right? Can I ask, is there a way we can prevent these triggers? Because, um, you know, we, we both have babies. Um, how old is your baby now? Oh, uh, eight months. So she started eating, right? Got it right, yes. Yeah, she started eating. My baby's one years old. And from the get-go, my pediatrician, uh, my, my baby's pediatrician said when we started Ampasi, the food, um, she, uh, he said, like, um, protein. Like, get away from fruits. Get away from carbs. They don't need it um, because it, at the end it becomes sugar. Um, so unnecessary sugar for the kids. So what are there things that we can help the kids with to prevent these triggers uh, okay. other than literally decreasing the sugar intake? Okay, so like for the type 1 diabetes, because of type 1 diabetes usually uh, happen after some certain um, infection mm -hmm. or even certain consumption or there's a intoxication from the baby. So yeah. we have to make sure that uh, we have to prevent the baby to get as far away as possible from the infection like we do vaccination yes like plenty of the plenty of the disease that i've told you before is actually prevented by vaccination like measles rubella or even some like rotavirus is actually prevented by uh, vaccination so make sure that your baby our baby get vaccinated uh, on yeah. time yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, after that of course the sugar consumption for the diabetes type 2 the diabetes type 2 uh, we make sure that the sugar consumption even for children or toddler or even baby has to be as slow as possible. We have to, you know, manage What's the sugar. What's the limit? 
The limit is actually for uh, for toddler is around maybe more or less 25 gram per day. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, per day. Per day. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> if, if, if you see the the you know the bottle, it's actually suited, a lot. <laughs> it's actually a lot. Sometimes yes. one bottle is like 31 gram. Or yeah, something. yeah, wow. yeah. Yeah, so it's 25 gram, and okay. uh, yeah, for for uh, like like your baby during the introduction of solid food, maybe it's a little, a little bit more, a little bit less. Maybe I'm not until five to ten grams per day. Wow. So. Okay. So um, let's go a little further. Can you, I mean, Kai mentioned a couple of interesting points in regards to carbs and fruits contain a lot of natural sugars. Um, could you define sugar for us and how should we prioritize? For example, uh, you mentioned it was un unnecessary in our household. Those are actually the necessary sugars. I have to give my kids fruit for the sake of fiber despite their natural sugars. I have to give them some form of either rice or pasta or breads. So that all does get converted to glucose. So what are some of the things that we need to consider when we classify our foods and our treats? And how, you know, how do we balance it out so that they can, we can still have happy kids at home without completely <laughs> making them follow these strict rules, but also keep them healthy. Turn them into carnivores. <laughs> Make them eat so, meat. Yeah, actually, that, that's true. That's, that's a lot of questions come from the parents also yeah. uh, about how to identify the sugar. It's going to be tricky, actually. But uh, for most, we can divide into two. Okay. Like the one is the natural sugar. Natural sugar coming from like the rice, yeah, pasta, or even like fruit or okay. some veggies also. That's a natural sugar. And then the second one is the added sugar. Ah, okay. added sugar. So, what I uh, when we when I talk about uh, 25 gram daily is actually for the added sugar. So we don't we don't need to put so much sugar to our food or even our kids' food because naturally there are always there are already plenty of sugar. Yeah, so, with the carbs and. Agree. Like yeah. That. So if say for our kids, uh, like uh, fruits is okay. Of course, it's always okay. But like for the sweetened beverage. Mm. Even some milk, like a carton milk. Yeah. yeah. Like you have the, to really yeah, check. like because yeah. like the flavored milk, uh, yeah. uh, the fresh milk usually have more sugar, added sugar than it's supposed to be. So uh, we check a little bit more about uh, you know the ingredients and the yeah, read their labels. Especially. Yeah, so the label. Yes. So yeah. just no added sugar and more to the natural sugar. I wish I could convince my daughter because you know after uh, we finish our fruit, she's like, oh, it's time for dessert. I'm like. That yes. was your dessert. Didn't, didn't that taste sweet? Because that tasted sweet to me. So it's kind of weird how kids define it, right? But they remember, wanna... 25 grams. Make sure she doesn't know that, because if yeah. she knew, she's going to try to Google how much 25 grams in a bottle is. <laughs> exactly. And she's going to like, Dad, I've only had five grams today. <laughs> I want more. <laughs> so um, you've already mentioned what the rec you know, um, recommendation of the daily sugar intake is. But uh, I want to backtrack a little bit. Because... Uh, Diabetes type 1 and type 2 requires different treatments. Um, could you please enlighten us if a diabetes type 1 could still be curable, if, if these still can be curable or made better through their, uh, through their treatments or uh, not, and what kind of treatments they are? So like for a type 1 diabetes, usually it's, it's a, a lifelong disease. Mm -hmm. So because you don't have, the patient doesn't have Insulin, right? Yeah. So we have to Regular. give insulin yeah. like every single day throughout their life. We just we have plenty of the patient actually sure. uh, through that. Even now, because of the technology, we have like Automated. automatically yeah. inject, injected insulin. So now it's it's becoming more and more convenient for the patient. But yeah, for the uh, type one, we, we we don't really uh, able to refer, reverse the condition. Like mm -hmm. the the pancreas is already broken, so we cannot. Mm redo the pancreas. So, but for the type 2 diabetes, it's depending, the, depending on the how severe? resistant or how severe is right. the insulin sometimes. But the, uh, the mm -hmm. bottom line is uh, treating diabetes is not only giving the insulin or like the medication, but also the like multi-dimensional approach, like from the diet. Lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. lifestyle, yeah. like the, the moving, even, even the, the even the exercise, even the psychological like from the patients and the parents also, mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. And, uh, I, you know, do, do you think uh, in the future, you as a pediatrician, seeing these numbers go up must be alarming. You experience this in your job as well. Um, is there a trend, a shift 
because we've seen, like, um, let's take the United States. Obesity became a huge problem there for children, and schools decided to do something about it. They implemented a healthier eating program. They got rid of the junk food in cafeterias. But again, it's a slow process. Do you see this happening in Indonesia as well as not only medical professionals, but parents and educators are starting to be more aware yeah. of these situations? Yeah, unfortunately, yes. I mean, like, the trend is toward on that uh, condition where there may be in the future, in the near future, that there were more and more kids with diabetes that we have to treat even. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we have, like, uh, better better life now, like, everything is... Available. Uh, e available. Yeah. Everything yeah, yeah, yeah. is easy to get. Sure. I mean, like, only a few swipe and click, we already get our food. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Sweet. Yeah. So that's actually... Yeah, uh, good or bad in their own terms, but... Uh, Depending what you're yeah. swiping and clicking <laughs> <Yeah>. on. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, uh, maybe uh, one thing that maybe uh, people not really realize that uh, preventing diabetes in children is not started, actually not started when the baby is born or even the baby. It it's us. Mom. It started from us. Like oh. when, we are, we are, when, we are not, uh, when we are not yet a parents, we have to do the lifestyle we have to do the uh, you know good food good nutrition because mm -hmm. of what because of we have actually we can tweak our gene sure. so if if us as an yeah. adult we eat too much sugar and then the diabetic gene will will enhance right. ah, so that yeah. that enhancement will pass through our genetic to the, even if to you're pre-diabetic like if you don't have any if yeah you even have even diabetes. even really? even even yeah that's actually what happened when we we studied the 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 West like the US right. like like ah. yeah like the Europe oh. uh, actually because of their grandparents right. like you uh, know they they, during the early 40s or 50s yeah, yeah, after yeah. the war yes. there are so many so many uh, uh, yeah factory and food and, yeah. and ultra processed food and yes. then TV what, dinners yeah TV dinner <laughs> yeah. they don't get the consequences but, but actually their oh, grandchildren, the, the yeah. next, the children following that. That's so scary. Yeah. Wow. It's so scary, yeah. right? So it. we have hard to, you got to break that chain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we have to break that chain. I just have one last question. So you as a pediatrician, what tips do you usually give uh, to the parents bringing their, uh, their children who are struggling to manage their sugar mm. intakes? Other than, you know, the tips you gave to us balancing, what are the other most important things that we should think about in regards to this? Well, yes, for the children, actually, uh, according to the research, yes, they are prone to a sweet taste. Mm. Mm -hmm. So we have to be careful with all the sugar and the sweets. So uh, how to do that is to manage the environment. Okay. So just, just make sure that if, you, if, if we want our children to eat uh, better, uh, less sugar, then we as a parents have to eat less, less sugar too. <laughs> because they see us and they observe and they... They always want to want to try to imitate their parents, like that is true. Because yeah. you always say, "Hey, you can't have that lollipop." Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm ordering right. Marta Bucks. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's exactly what I did this weekend. It's, it's, it's my baby. She's one year old. Yeah. She refuses to eat what I'm not eat, what I'm right. eating. I mean, what what I'm not, not eating. eating. Right. Yeah. They prefer exactly. of what you eating. Yeah, right? exactly. And if I can That's add amazing. one more thing, perhaps, uh, get, you know, the pandemic is kind of behind us now. Get your kids out there. And, Get them full exercise. of activities. Exercise, guys. Exercise yes, yes. also certainly helps physical activity for the young and the old. Dr. Yeah. Jetta, thank you so much thank for joining so us much. today. Thank you for inviting uh, me. On thank this you. very important topic, and we hope that you found some insight in it as well. Yes. It's uh, time for us to take another break anyway. So uh, we'll be back with more here on the C Morning Show, including some recaps from our earlier news segment. Stay with us. We'll be right back.